Muammar Gaddafi, the former Libyan leader, made a lasting effect on Africa with his grand vision for the continent, particularly his support for Africa's United States. Despite his four-decade leadership, Gaddafi maintained lofty hopes for Libya and Africa as a whole. His downfall, which revolved around themes of love, money, and betrayal, is still remembered as one of the most significant events of the 21st century. Throughout his reign, Gaddafi had a tremendous affection for Uganda, its people, and its president. He saw the Ugandan leader as a personal friend and ally. However, in an unexpected turn of events, it was this same commander who eventually betrayed Gaddafi, resulting in his downfall. The leader in issue is none other than Uganda's then-president, who played a key role in organizing Gaddafi's betrayal. The intricacies of this treachery, as well as its repercussions for Libya and Uganda, highlight the complexities of international politics and the unpredictable nature of political partnerships. Gaddafi's connection with Uganda and its leader serves as a cautionary story about the shifting sands of diplomacy and the inherent perils of relying on political allies. It emphasizes the significance of judgment and vigilance when negotiating the complex web of international politics, where friendships can suddenly devolve into betrayals with far-reaching implications. The connection between Ugandan President Yuri Kaguta Musvini and former Libyan leader Mohamed Gaddafi was complex and multidimensional, spanning decades and political regimes. Gaddafi's relationship with Uganda dates back to the 1970s, under the reign of Uganda's former leader, Idi Amin. This long-standing relationship established the framework for a friendship that has persisted despite altering political landscapes and global dynamics. Despite their differing ideologies and leadership styles, Gaddafi and Museveni shared an ambition for African unity and freedom from Western influence. Gaddafi, known for his pan-Africanist ideals and desire for a united Africa, regarded Museveni as an important ally in his efforts to foster African solidarity and oppose Western power. However, the nature of their relationship began to evolve during the Arab Spring and Western intervention in Libya. In a 2016 letter, Musveni chastised the United States and the African Union for their interference in Libya and the larger Middle East area, expressing his displeasure with their role in destroying Gaddafi's regime. Musveni betrayed Gaddafi for a variety of reasons, including geopolitical calculations, local considerations, and regional dynamics. As Uganda's leader, Museveni was under pressure to align with Western countries' goals while also safeguarding Uganda's strategic interests in the international arena. Furthermore, the changing geopolitical landscape, typified by shifting alliances and growing dangers, may have motivated Museveni to reconsider his relationship with Gaddafi and put Uganda's national interests ahead of personal connections. The betrayal of Gaddafi by Museveni just tells us how fragile the balance of power on the African continent actually is. It emphasizes the difficulties African governments confront in negotiating the competing interests of global powers while preserving sovereignty and promoting regional stability. Gaddafi provided considerable and diversified support to Uganda, particularly under the dictatorship of Idi Amin. He offered moral, economic, and military support to Amin's regime, defending Uganda during times of crisis and external threats. When Amin's regime faced attacks or resistance, Gaddafi was eager to give assistance, including deploying troops and military equipment. Gaddafi's unwavering support for Uganda endears him to Amin's leadership and strengthens their bond. Following Amin's fall in 1979, Gaddafi's relationship with Uganda changed dramatically. Amin fled the nation, first finding sanctuary in Libya and then in Saudi Arabia. After Amin's departure, Uganda experienced political instability and transformation. Elections were held in 1980 to select the country's next leader. However, when the election results did not favor him, Yoram Yusvini, a significant opposition figure, challenged the results, claiming electoral fraud and injustice. The disputed election results triggered a civil war in Uganda, pitting Musvini and his followers against the government and other opposition groups. Musvini's desire for power, combined with his reluctance to recognize the election results, created the framework for a long-running confrontation that would dominate Uganda's political landscape for years.
One key element contributing to the rift between Gaddafi and Musfini was a disagreement between Western interests and Gaddafi's grandiose aim for African unity. Gaddafi's call for the establishment of a United States of Africa directly challenged Western plans and economic interests in the area. His forceful leadership style and ambitious plan for African integration jeopardized Western influence, driving Western powers to destabilize his rule. Musvini, as a leader linked with Western interests, may have felt obligated to distance himself from Gaddafi in order to avoid penalties and maintain his international political status. Furthermore, Gaddafi's assertiveness and desire for African unity may have presented a challenge to Musvini's own political ambitions and regional dominance. Musvini, a leader with vested interests in retaining power and regional peace, may have seen Gaddafi's assertive leadership style as a threat to his own authority. As a result, he may have felt compelled to distance himself from Gaddafi in order to protect his political position and avoid disrupting his regime. Musvini and his army ran out of weapons and ammunition during the battle. He would need assistance from somewhere. He merely needed to win the war. He was overly power-hungry. So, what did he do? He needed to look for aid. He only sought the United States and the United Kingdom for military assistance. His request was denied due to his strong relationship with Muhammad Gaddafi. He then traveled to meet with Gaddafi, his country's best buddy. Gaddafi never hesitated. Gaddafi provided him all the assistance he required, including military supplies, and he emerged victorious. Gaddafi provided support on various times, including the Ugandan Civil War in 1986, in which Musvine emerged triumphant. Muammar Gaddafi provided considerable and diversified support to Yoweri Musvini's dictatorship in Uganda, including military help, economic investment, and strategic advice. Following the loss of Paul Kawanga's Samagurir, Gaddafi's Libya intervened to provide critical military training and support to Musvini's troops. This aid was critical in strengthening Musvini's hold on power and establishing his regime. In recognition of Gaddafi's support, Musvini named his covert intelligence unit after its Libyan counterparts, emphasizing the extent of their friendship and coordination. Gaddafi's repeated excursions to Uganda, which he characterized as a second home, demonstrated his desire to strengthen connections with Musmi's administration. Gaddafi's Libyan African portfolio included significant investments in Uganda's economy, particularly in crucial industries like telephones, textiles, finance, and real estate. His influence extended to critical industries, with notable acquisitions including a majority ownership in Uganda Telecom and Tristar Limited, a well-known textile company. These investments not only pumped capital into Uganda's economy, but also helped to create jobs and improve infrastructure, establishing the framework for long-term economic progress. Furthermore, Gaddafi lobbied for a shift in Uganda's oil refining strategy, urging Musvini to prioritize domestic processing over exporting crude oil to Europe and the West. He envisioned a regional network of oil refineries and pipelines to boost trade and promote economic self-sufficiency in East Africa. Gaddafi's support for these programs mirrored his strategic vision for Uganda's economic development and regional integration, demonstrating his dedication to supporting African interests and lessening reliance on foreign powers. Gaddafi's investments included not only telephones and textiles, but also finance and real estate. He contributed funding to institutions such as the Tropical Bank of Africa, the National Housing Corporation, and the renowned Lake Victoria Hotel. These contributions helped Uganda's economic growth and infrastructure development, giving a lasting impression of Gaddafi's influence and support in the country. Beyond their political and military cooperation, Gaddafi expressed a strong interest in Uganda's cultural and developmental landscape, notably the Toro Kingdom. This enthusiasm led to his participation in a variety of projects aimed at improving the kingdom's infrastructure and socio-economic growth. Gaddafi focused his attention on the Toro Kingdom in 2001, despite the fact that its king, King Oyomiemba, was only nine years old at the time. Gaddafi's financial backing helped to build the majestic Toro Palace, which symbolizes his commitment to enhancing Uganda's cultural legacy and economy. Gaddafi's relationship with the Toro Kingdom represented his larger vision for Africa's growth and unification, 
demonstrating his conviction in the value of cultural preservation and community empowerment. Gaddafi aimed to create social cohesiveness and economic resilience by investing in community-benefiting projects, providing the groundwork for long-term growth and prosperity. His backing for initiatives, such as the Turo Palace, exemplified a comprehensive approach to development, combining cultural heritage with socioeconomic advancement. Gaddafi has made an indelible mark on the Ugandan Muslim community through his gifts to religious structures. He generously funded the construction of a magnificent mosque that can accommodate at least 3,000 worshippers, making it the second largest mosque in Eastern Africa. Gaddafi's sponsorship for religious and cultural programs in Uganda strengthened his legacy and influence in the region. Furthermore, Gaddafi's conversations with Museveni demonstrated a friendly and open relationship between the two leaders. During his visits to Uganda, Gaddafi allegedly joked with Museveni, suggesting that he governed for life and doubting the need for elections. This playful banter showed Gaddafi and Museveni's friendliness and familiarity, emphasizing the intimacy and informality of their relationship. During one of his visits, he upgraded one of Museveni's sons in the military from captain to major. In the 2001 and 2006 presidential elections, Gaddafi helped Museveni carry out his campaigns. Their connection appeared to be solid and unshakable, but this was not the case until the very end. What actually drove Museveni to depose Gaddafi? We will examine this in two parts, Western interests and Muammar Gaddafi's goals. As you may be aware, Muhammad Gaddafi is the most prominent figure mentioned whenever the concept of a United States of Africa is discussed. His vision for African unity includes the formation of an African United States. Just like Ghana's Kwame Krumah, Gaddafi put a lot of effort into the drive for African unity. During a summit in 1989, Gaddafi persuaded 45 heads of state to endorse the establishment of an African Union, which replaced the African Union. For more than a decade after that, Gaddafi was the most popular supporter of this union. Still, in 1989, he proposed the creation of the United States of Africa, which would have a unified currency and military. He claimed that the African Union will serve as a facilitator for his dream. During Gaddafi's leadership, Libya provided around 15% of the funding for African Union programs. This, however, alarmed Western powers and certain African leaders, who believed it would skew their status, influence, and position on the continent. The notion caused disagreement among African leaders on the issue. Surprisingly, Museveni was also opposed to this idea. Gaddafi had previously assisted Museveni and even helped him establish significant authority in Uganda. He had made significant investments in his country and provided assistance when necessary. Why did Museveni disagree with Gaddafi's notion of establishing the United States? States of Africa. First, it posed a danger to his hold on power in Uganda. So I am aware of Mr. Gaddafi's approaches and efforts to establish a foothold in your part of Africa and elsewhere, and I just prefer to intervene cautiously. He flatteringly acknowledged Gaddafi's point of view, but did not fight for it. He refused to be governed by another leader. It'll be him or no one else. Second, Museveni's influence was becoming increasingly felt in the region, and in this capacity, he helped the interests of the West by conducting military operations in nations such as Somalia. He also offered intellectual support to the CIA's officials. Mr. President, the war against the administration began before you did. What? I started fighting the government before you did. But he prioritized the interests of the West over those of his African compatriots. When this decision was finally proposed at an African Union conference in Akragana in 2007, Museveni violently opposed it. He believed that endorsing the concept of African unification would cause friction between him and the Western countries. He said he did not deem a united Africa necessary due to linguistic and cultural differences. He went further to say that Gaddafi bribed small African countries to support him and made it difficult for them to speak out during African Union and other international meetings. He was aware that these people kept him in power and could remove him at any time. Museveni was also afraid that betraying Gaddafi might cause problems in his military and financial concerns. He realized that resisting Gaddafi was far simpler than resisting the West, 
Musvini's actions facilitated Gaddafi's betrayal. Musvini offered his consent to Jend Fraser, Assistant Secretary General of State for African Affairs, on June 13, 2008, at his son's graduation ceremony in the United States. Musvini stated that rising tensions with Gaddafi will lead to an attack on his plane while in international airspace. He asked assistance from the United States of America, which he received. Gaddafi was more concerned about Musvini's popularity in Uganda than his relationship with America. When Gaddafi paid a surprise visit to Uganda in 2008, Musvini's regime interpreted it as a plot against their president. During a 37-minute speech at an Arab youth event in Uganda, Gaddafi switched topics and stated that he now wanted to engage with traditional leaders rather than elected presidents to achieve his goals for the United States of Africa. In 2009, he convened a meeting of African traditional leaders to discuss continent-wide unity. When Musvini learned of this, he refused to allow Ugandan traditional rulers to attend the summit. Musvini had persuaded Gaddafi that the U.S. president at the time, George Bush, would lift sanctions against Libya and invest in his country, provided he dismantled his weapons of mass destruction. After speaking with certain British diplomats, Gaddafi learned that Musvini had sold him on declaring and eventually dismantling the nuclear and chemical weapons programs. You stated at the time that Libya expected great benefits, which were quite genuine. Many people in Libya claim they are still waiting for such benefit. What's Libya waiting for? What are your expectations from the West? I believe President Bush honors his own world, but we are not so sure. What exactly are you waiting for the United States to do? What issue do you have with President Bush? This was Gaddafi's greatest blunder, and it contributed to his collapse. He did not have a powerful nuclear bomb capable of neutralizing native forces. Since then, Musvini has attempted to fill Gaddafi's shoes by championing African integration in finance and security. He excels in several areas, but he lacks the charm and financial resources to complete this endeavor. Even if he is successful, he may not receive support. Even the West will not, for the same reasons they fought Gaddafi. During one of his talks in 2021, Musvini remarked that the Western powers' aims were narrow and unexpectedly. These are the same individuals to whom he had sold Gaddafi. The Gaddafi Mosque, which was built in Uganda, was renamed two years after his death to placate the authorities. Nearly two years after Gaddafi's death, the Uganda Muslim Supreme Council has dropped his name to accommodate the current Libyan government. Musvini's only option was not to blackmail Gaddafi, whom he feared more than any other African leader. It is certain that when Musvini's time to draw power arrives, no one will be present to save him. That concludes the video about the man who betrayed Muammar Gaddafi. We hope you enjoyed this video. Please leave a comment in the box below to tell us your mind on this finding, and before we take leave of you, please subscribe to our channel and turn on the notification bell so that you don't miss any of our interesting content. Thank you for watching and see you in our next video.